Hi, I'd like to give you some feedback on the assignment for August 24 through the 27th. Basically, I saw you writing about five weaknesses of your training experiences. The first, the lack of a follow through to the training. This is a serious item. If an individual is being trained, it's obvious that you want a change in behavior in something and people just don't get it with one presentation or one session. The model that you will be learning in this course will address this issue. Another classmate commented that some departments don't use all the tools that they have available. I have learned that when you become departments, you can become departmentalized and you're not aware of what's going on next door to you. And that is why uh, cross-functional teams looking at possible training could be of benefit to some organizations. Number three, the boring instructor reading PowerPoint slides. That's probably one of the worst things that can happen in the learning environment. PowerPoints meant to be a takeoff point to talk, a takeoff point for audience questions, a takeoff point for a collaborative discussion. All too often, people prefer just to write it all out and read it to you. I admit, I was once that kind of person. And after a presentation, I had the gift of feedback from one of the students that was participating. Too many distractions if you're having a webinar or a telecon set of training. I'll never forget we were in a meeting about a new process and you could hear people tapping on the keyboard. They hadn't muted their phone. They were multitasking, doing their home, doing their email. Uh, that is always a issue. And that's why I think uh, it has to be interactive with perhaps the caller asking people by name for their feedback about certain points. You would have the points that you're going to ask about in front of you with names and you would engage. Believe me, just one time disengaged is embarrassing enough that people will not just turn it on and walk away. One person commented that they were starting to work years ahead on a system change. That was my experience also in Shell in my final a project, a project that I barely survived on ERP systems. Um, they plan so far ahead. But let me tell you something very important. If you're going to uh, put in a new pro work process, not only do you need a change plan, you need a communication plan. Who will say what, when, where, how? Are you going to use posters? Are you going to have brown bag lunches? Are you going to send out emails, etc., etc., etc.? A training rollout without a communication plan is exceptionally weak. And we will learn about a model that incorporates the communication plan together. Now, what works? Okay, one individual said that training should be provided more often. In this case, she was suggesting in the medical field once a month. The issue of training and retraining is one of the, well, it's one of the problems we face. I do believe in retraining, but I don't believe that you keep retraining with the same material and approach you used the last time. In a former, with a former employer in health and safety at a refinery, they were required to use refresher training every year online with the same uh, test and set of materials. Boring, boring, boring. I do believe different modalities can be used. So it could be face-to-face -face one time, online another. 
You can engage with video format. You can engage with VoiceThread, the tool you're about to use this coming this week. One of you, again, a nurse, enjoyed a checklist approach for refresher training going to station to station to station. I think that's a pretty cool idea to engage people in the workplace. And frankly, I'd never thought of it. Now, Cheryl introduced a new training philosophy to me called the FISH philosophy. And I will put out the link to that in the announcements. Well, I hope this has given you some food for thought and stirred other ideas in your minds.